itself in this scripture. It says that, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret, and there were two ships standing by the lake, but the fishers' men were gone out of them and were washing their nets. I want to talk to you about the ministry of the unusual. Say the ministry, the ministry. of the unusual. Of the unusual. Let me help somebody quickly this morning so that I don't preach too long. If you are looking for God in your life, you will not find him in usual places. God does things, he confounds the wise, and he gives prudence to those who are open to him to bring his wisdom into their lives. Now, every one of us have complaints that we could make about our lives. Amen. Everyone here, they said that there was a time when the people pressed to hear Jesus. Don't look like nobody doing a lot of pressing these days. There was a time that they knew something so valuable about the presence of God through Jesus Christ that they pushed their way. The woman with the issue of blood pushed her way. Nicodemus jumped up into a sycamore tree because of his shortness. He pushed his way. Any time you're going to get results from your relationship with God, you got to do some pushing. I remember one year we had a phase P U S H meant pray until something happens. We've gotten too nonchalant with God. We've gotten too cool with God. Uh, God does not ever meet us on a first name basis. When I was in seminary, I remember Dr. Mangrum, uh, we were doing our exit sermons and everybody had to preach at the Carl P. Collins Chapel before the Bishop College uh, 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 end of their physical year. And this one guy in his sermon he wrote, Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. And he just got the, he got the preaching and, oh, Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. Afterward, Dr. Mangrum came to the entire class and said, when did you get that personal with God? The way you can change God's name to fit your personality. It says that, that they pressed to hear the word of God and there were two ships. Two ships, the ships represent you and they represent me. In other words, they call ships in the Bible vessels. Are you with me? And vessels <coughs> used to carry treasure. In every ship, there was some treasure. Are you with me? So in the metaphor of ship, two ships, these are two People, these are two prototypes. They are folk that used to do fishing. And they were professional at it. They weren't just uh, Coors and Miller's uh, uh, partners out on the lake. They, 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 they were not just Saturday Bachman Lake goers. These were professional commercial fishermen and their lives depended on them catching fish. Are you with me? Right. Right. <laughs> Jesus passes by and you do know that in your life, if you live long enough, the Lord is going to pass you by. <laughs> your situation, he's going to meet you at just the time <clears throat> he needs to meet you for you to get the blessing that he has for you. <clears throat> he saw two ships. He saw two ships. And they were docked by the lake. Stay with me a minute because I'm going to give you a shout in the phone. And so he said, these ships were unoccupied. They had all of the equipment to catch fish 
on the boat. They had the anchors, they had the lure, they had the net, they had the sail, they had everything that you needed to catch fish was on the boat. But the problem was, was the boat was docked by the ship, at, by, by the land, and the people on the boat had stopped. What are you saying, Pastor? We're ships. We're vessels. On the inside of us is treasure. God has put the treasure. And your ship was perhaps singing in the choir. And that's what you did for the master. You sung in the choir. Your ship was to usher and to be a greeter and a nurse in church. And that's what you did. You served and, and you had the ability to evangelize and to bring others in because you had everything you needed on your ship. But all of a sudden, somebody made you mad. I, 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 on the way to church today, I asked, I asked uh, in fact, I asked Ashley when she got it. I said, Ashley, I, I, I sure would like to see some rooms. Now, I wasn't thinking about today being youth day, but my mind thought a few months ago, y'all bought some rooms. And for the last few Sundays, ain't nobody been in the choir singing in no rooms. So that means that you got your ship, your choir member, and I'm not fussing, just discussing. And for some reason, you have a complaint. And your complaint may a lot of times say this, folks, or say this. A lot of times we launch our complaints to the wrong people. Yes, uh, Jesse and I are working on some stuff, and the apostle will come to him. And Jesse don't own this building. Mm -hmm. Say that. Did you hear me, Carol? Amen. The apostle will come to him mm -hmm. and say, I, I, I need more time. I need this and that. And Jesse will come to me and tell me. And I said, look at this. I, I said, thank you for the message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but he talked to the wrong person. All right. All right. They said that, <coughs> Master, we've been toiling all night. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a way to get this out. <laughs> toiling represents hard work. Some of y'all work, but you don't toil. All right. All right. Toiling means you put your sweat in it. Toiling means that you're not just out there for the paycheck. You want the reward. Yeah. Toiling means that you don't play when you work. When you work, you give work all that work. When you play, you play now. Yeah. Yeah. But when you work, you give it all your ethics and about you. But they had their complaints. Somebody here now said, Master, I've been in this church a long time. I've I, 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 I fed a lot of folk. I've had a lot of dealings. Uh, I, I've given a lot of money. I, but you know what? It don't seem like things are working out for me. So therefore, I take my boat. I take it out of the ship line. And I, 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 and I put my boat and I leave my boat under tender. Just the very time that God needs to get a blessing through you, you are not even in your bones. Just that conversation that you need to have. God will put a weary soldier at the table at your job just so you can minister to them. But you are in your boat. God will line somebody up that needs to be fed from your spirit because they know you got Jesus in your life, but not today. I'm out of my boat. Yesterday I came preaching the hell out of you, telling you about the goodness of God, but today I'm out of my boat. And so let's, let's figure out quickly here so I can let you go. Why are they out of their boat? Why did you start singing and quit? Why did you start being a preacher false and say I'm not preaching no more? Why did you say I'm going to work on the evangelistic team and I'm really playing with the church and everybody involved? It's because I had a complaint. I'm glad you had. Look at the complaint. It says, Master, we've been toiling all night and have caught nothing. Some of you are a little frustrated with, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But you were trying to do your best in life. 
You were trying to make that relationship work. You were trying to cut that habit off. You were trying to get to another financial level. You were trying to make things better for you and your baby. You were trying to do the right things because that's the way you were brought up. But he said, Master, I've been doing this all night and I ain't called nothing but hell. All right. All right. I know. The night is a metaphor for nothing, you all. Anytime you see in the Bible night, the metaphor for nothing says that night time is the night when you don't have any visibility. So therefore, you can't see your, you're trying to figure your problem out, but you're in the night. You're trying to figure out how God is going to get your situation straightened out, but you can't see your way because you're in darkness. And if anybody knows about pain, at nighttime, pain seems to be the worst that it's going to get. Uh, my wife used to say, uh, recently, she said, I hate nights. Yes. Because of her insomnia, and sometimes she just honestly cannot sleep. She said, I hate nights. Nighttime, he said, we've been toiling all night. Now, here we go. If you honestly can tell God that you've been toiling, I didn't say complaining, I said toiling. I didn't say whining about your situation, I said toiling. I didn't say discussing your position with everybody on your job, I said toiling. Sometimes you got to toil all by yourself. Nobody's going to help you, nobody's going to get along with you. He said, we've been toiling all night, we've not taught anything. Well, let's figure out why the church why the fishermen here? Why we've been working so hard and the frustration is set in because it's nighttime and we've called nothing. I'm glad you asked. Look at the second verse. It says, and they were washing their nets. Are you there yet? The church cannot catch new fish. With dirty nets. That's right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Ain't nobody, do you know what's in a dirty net? Malice gets up into dirty nets. Backbiters get into dirty nets. If you were Charlie of the chi chicken of the sea, he wouldn't even let you in the net. The net catches all kind of trap stuff. And even good fish perch, look at the dirty net and say, I ain't getting in. I wish y'all would catch that. There may be somebody that would join our church. There may be somebody that would support our church. There may be others that will commit sincerely to our church. If our nets were not dirty. So there's a process. If you're going to bring your boat in, if you're going to stop singing a while, if you're going to stop coming to Sunday school a while, at least be found cleaning your nets while you're out. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Don't, don't just dock your boat and say, I'm not going to do the thing that I promised God I'm going to do. If you are out of commission, you ought to be out of commission so that you could get back into the will of God. That's right. That's good. Now, I'm glad I didn't hear it just from Luke because Mark said they were mending their nets. Yeah. Whether you're watching or mending, they still dirty nets that will not catch fish. Yeah. If we had Mark's theology, we would be saying this morning, the reason that we don't have the backdoor ministry, you do know what the backdoor ministry is. In backdoor ministry is that when people join, we make it our job to find out that they don't just sneak out the back door. All right. All right. All right. So you out two or three Sundays, call somebody. That's yeah. right. Oh, you're right. You got three or four more sons, visit somebody, send a car, do whatever it takes. Because when you have dirty or uh, when you have nets that are broken, folk would jump into the net on Sunday morning, but they're out of the net on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Help the Lord Jesus. Yeah. It says that we've been toiling all night. And nevertheless, yeah, yeah, yeah. we talk nothing. Finally, I'm going to say this. Some of us are ungrateful. 
God filled your nets up. You were toiling, you didn't catch anything, but all of a sudden stuff started having good in your life. Mm -hmm. Chris, all of a sudden things started turning out right in your life. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you do have that second job. All of a sudden, you don't have to go to the doctor twice a week anymore. Yeah. Hey. All of a sudden, you don't have that pain for a husband or a wife. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, there, there's no room for you not to get back in your boat. But it says here, he says, cash your list back out there. You quit. You walked away. This morning ought to be your morning. To say, I'm getting back in my boat. Wherever my boat was, whether it was ushering, whether it was in the choir, I'm not going to let the devil steal my joy anymore. My boat is sitting here. God is trying to, what, what is it about me and my boat that God can use? Maybe some of your ugliest experiences can be somebody's greatest testimony. Yeah. Yeah. Are you ashamed to tell? Brother Daniels gave me a tape the other day that I wouldn't dare preach it so powerful from his pastor and it was simply about the people in the church that had been raped and molested and the men of the church had to get up and apologize to them and as I was listening to this message uh, I was not in the building when he preached it but I can see the women, women getting up just over here where I was raped yeah. my dad mm -hmm. I went through this. And then when you had the men to stand up, tears just flowed everywhere because they were the ones that had raped the women. He says, if whatever your reason is for not serving, it's not going to be good enough for God to hear. Your mess may be raggedy compared to her. Everybody else may have a yacht and all you got is a palace boat. But baby, if it floats on water, you better act like Peter. That's right. He says, Master, we've been toiling all night. But we haven't caught anything. Watch this. Here's my last thought for you. Nevertheless, at your word. Say that with me. Nevertheless, nevertheless at, at, at your, your word. word. See it? Over here, nevertheless. Nevertheless, at your word. Come on, over here. Nevertheless. Some of us are living right now off of a clock called nevertheless. You don't have any good sense in doing what God is wanting you to do because he's telling you to go back in a situation you just cleaned yourself out of. He's telling you, I'm going to clean up the individual that was calling you habit and you're saying, God, I, I just got the filth and the dirt off of me. He's telling you that even though all night you were toiling, you didn't catch anything, you were unproductive, he said, I dare you to get yourself back where you're supposed to be. You're not supposed to be on the corner whining. You're supposed to be on your boat. You're supposed to be fishermen of men, and that's what I called you to be. Nevertheless, at your word. Somebody right now, this sermon may not catch you at all because you are in your nevertheless. You may not understand what I'm saying this morning, but if you are in between your rock and a hard place, you're going to have to come to the conclusion, God, it doesn't make sense. I don't want to do it. It's not rational. It doesn't have any logic to it. It may even make situations worse than it makes it better, but nevertheless. Yeah. 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 Here it is. At your word. Yes. At your word. You do know about the word, don't you? Mm -hmm. It says it's like a lamp unto my feet. Yes. It's like a light unto my bed. Yes. Well, nevertheless, you may have cussed me out last time. Yeah. But I'm getting back in my boat. Huh. And I'm going to roll for Jesus. Yes, I might not have caught any fish last night. Yeah. But I'm getting back on the boat now. I may have been using worms, oh. but I should have been fishing with minnows. Yeah. But nevertheless, at your word, Lord, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess. 